Lumberzak here. It's a bright sunny day out, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Everything in the shop is the exact same temperature. So let's thaw out some PVC and make a birdhouse. That didn't work out. We need a better option. So, I decided we'll just bolt the blanks down. The circle cutter was the hardest part to figure out. That's a nice circle. Once we got it adjusted correctly and got everything going, cut out some nice circles. Then we can mark a spot for our bird's opening. Just find a spot that looks aesthetically pleasing. That's a nice hole. Then on the back side, we'll do the same thing. Find a center point and then mark three spots. We'll drill air holes. This will keep the air from getting stagnant inside the birdhouse. Then it's on to cutting the PVC. I'm just using a hand miter saw here, trying to figure out what's a nice angle. Once we get it cut, we can mark off eight inches from the tip on the long side. Don't worry about that angle on the back side. That was a 45 degree angle. I ended up just using a 30 degree angle. I thought it looked a lot nicer. Man oh man, this is a lot of work. Once you're done cutting the PVC pipe, your edges are going to be very sharp. I got numerous nicks and cuts. So sand off the edges, make a nice little chamfer on there. Once you get that done, then we need to do some horizontal sanding on the surface of the pipe. It's kind of shiny, but this will scuff it up enough so that our paint will stick. You don't want to gouge it, but you do want to have some nice score marks in here. You'll want to go front to back and not around the pipe. This will allow the paint to stick and it won't look funny once the paint goes on. We'll wipe off any excess dust and then do a little hand sanding on our front and back doors. Let's round the edges. This is a maple veneer ply, but you could use whatever you have. This is just what I had around. A few splinters around the edges, just sand those off, and ah, great finger. Uh, you might want to use some sandpaper that doesn't have holes in it. Man, that hurt. Once you get the edges done, and we can start putting it together. So our doors are going to be inset. We're going to have a little overhang. So we need to mark the distance that that's going to sit inside the pipe. And then I'm using some blue tape to create a straight edge that goes all around the circumference. Then I'm going to find a point that is halfway between the front edge and the tape. This is the halfway point on the thickness of whatever ply you happen to be using. I'm using a three quarter inch. So this would be three eighths. So then I go about a third of the way around the pipe, make another mark, half the thickness of our ply. And I do that on, the, on the, uh, both the front and the back side. So we're going to have three holes in each location. So I'm going to drill the pilot holes so that we don't split the pipe once we put some wood screws in there. I'm going to use a bullnose drill bit 
This is going to allow me to create a countersink. This is going to allow me to inset the head of the screw into the pipe such that it's going to be smooth with the outer surface. Now we're going to put a perch on the front. We just kind of eyeball it, find a spot that looks good, and then we'll mark that. I'm going to drill a hole that is slightly smaller than the diameter of the peg. This is going to allow me to have a nice snug fit that I could drop, just a drop of glue down inside there. We're going to go halfway through our ply, not all the way through. Tap it in, nice and snug. Not bad. Now the ply that I have is five plies thick. I'm taking a red marker and I'm marking the center ply. This will allow me to line up the center of the ply while looking down through the pilot hole. So I'm going to look down there, make sure everything is lined up, and then we're going to secure it. I'm just using a number six wood screw. It's not threaded all the way to the top, so this gives us the way to, to grip into the ply and, and still be able to snug it up nice on the, on the pipe. Once we have the front done, it's time for the back. Now when you are screwing in these screws, it's going to cause the front and the back to twist a little bit from the torque. So I'm just putting a little bit of tape down. I'm going to line it up the way I want, tape it to the pipe, and then set it down flat. This is going to keep it from twisting inside the pipe. There we go. Once you have the, all the screws in, just remove the tape. Looking good. Now, the tricky part is getting it to hang right. So I found a thin piece of scrap and I secured it on the tabletop and then we find our balance point. Right, 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 right there. All right, nice. Now we'll just mark that. Just lean down close to the scrap, put a little mark on there, and then we'll do it lengthwise. This is a little more of a challenge. There we go. Now, it should balance pretty close to the center line. Um, as you can see, these screws are slightly off, so this is balanced just, you know, maybe there's a void or something inside the plywood that's causing it to uh, lean to one side. But once I get the marks, I lay down some tape, they'll show me the front and the back, drill a pilot hole, and then twist in an eyelet. You want your pilot hole to be small, don't make it too big, or you're gonna have to get a larger fastener use a screwdriver to get me some extra twist there we go nice and snug take off our tape hangs nice next we paint I use a small roller to do this I find that it's easy to reach every place that you need you want to roll around the inside of the pipe on the front. Do this on the back also. This will allow the paint to show through if you happen to have any gaps from the circles that you cut to show on the edges. Now when you're painting the outside, as we mentioned, the score marks that we made with the sandpaper front to back, we're going to roll the paint front to back. Now the paint rollers that I had, uh, they had a lot of nap in them. So uh, they left kind of a texture a nice texture on there. Um, if you don't like the texture, find something with a smaller nap or a foam brush to, to roll it on. Um, I put on three coats. I let it dry um, in front of the shop heater for about an hour between coats. This is just a regular latex household paint. 
it seems to work out very nice. We had it around from the boys and girls rooms when we did some remodeling. I also painted the fronts and backs with a white latex primer. Three coats on there, three coats on the pipe. Comes out real nice. I had some chalkboard paint laying around. I used that on the perches. It absorbed into the pine real well, left a nice flat finish. So it gave a nice contrast. Our final assembly, screw everything back together. Reattach our eyelet. Now I use the bench grinder and I ground the tip off of these eyelets. That way we don't have a sharp point sticking down inside the birdhouse that could injure the birds. There you go. Not bad. Not bad at all. If you like this project, please click the subscribe button below. There's plenty more to come.